Okay, so welcome to this, which must be almost the last working session of the conference. Um, but for us, it's an important session. Around the world, civil society has been ever more important in the provision of TB services, either advocating for them or participating. In this session, we're wanting to talk about ways in which civil society could be even more useful than it already is in terms of provision of services as part of the care that people with tuberculosis will receive. We only have 45 minutes, so I'll not go on at length as an introduction, but we'll turn quickly to Yulia Kalancha, who is the executive director of TB Europe Coalition, a network of activists across the WHO Europe region. Yulia, over to you. Yes, thank you very much. So uh, as you Paul said, I will talk on cough to cure pass away, how it reflected and standardized package of community-based uh, supportive TB services. Next slide, please. So in cooperation uh, with WHO Europe office and uh, uh, Pass Center Moldova a standardized package of community-based services is, is being developed by TB Europe coalition. It is, Im it is important to note that now, Two packages are being developed for the region in parallel on medical and non-medical services, which will cover the entire patient's pathway and will not miss important components. So TB Europe Coalition is developing the non-medical services and WHO Europe is developing medical services component. So a standardized package of TB services at the community level uh, describes uh, the provision of non-medical services like social, psychological services, those services that should help and support a person on his way from cough to cure. And we hope that such a package can be implemented in countries of the ECA region, uh, considering the country's context, such as legislation, the needs of people affected uh, by TB, at uh, what stage country is in, uh, moving from donor to public funding. And however, I think uh, it is developed for the ECA uh, region, it can be also used for other regions as a framework. So this will determine how the services will be organized at the country level and how they will be financed and how uh, and who will provide them. Next slide, please. Uh, so civil society organization can provide both direct uh, TB services such as detection, uh, support, provision of social, uh, psychological and other services in the uh, process of diagnosis, uh, treatment and rehabilitation, as well as implement their uh, coordination activities like planning, management and communication processes are also very important. Uh, so now you see the cascade uh, of care for TB patients, which starts from working with key groups. We must reach every person affected by TB and act accordingly to the principles of no one left behind and no one should be outside of care. And uh, this um, cascade is ending with rehabilitation. We see that traditionally uh, support is concentrated in the medical TB institution. It is highlighted in gray here, where in fact there is an appeal, self-appeal for support examination, a laboratory diagnostic treatment and completion of treatment. But the cascade is not, not limited to this. We see the cascade much wider today. Uh, on the left, in yellow, we see that part of the cascade that includes outreach and referral of people at risk of getting TB or with symptoms and that part where the medical system and TB doctor do not have access and authority to work and we are not even saying about uh, some specific resources for such work. And the green highlights that uh, part of the cascade where help does not end with the completion of treatments, since we are uh, talking about rehabilitation, resocialization, uh, and of course work with environment uh, is a great importance. And red arrows indicate where civil society organization participation has already proven as effective, and the higher uh, and the higher the need for participation 
participation and it's important at each level of the cascade the more arrows are indicated there but this is if we are uh, already speak about the traditional groups of those who were identified detected uh, redirected and those who were offered treatment next slide please more broadly, uh, there are a lot of cases when the system is not able, in traditional sense, to cover such patients whom we call lost of follow-ups. And those who did not uh, reach at all and were lost from the healthcare uh, system. In the, way, uh, in the same way, we are talking about the diagnostic of contact, contacts as well as people uh, in uncurable conditions. We are talking about the need of uh, palliative care. A huge range of services is required for comorbidities and, uh, and uh, concomitant disease because this, uh, because with the patient's centered approach, we do not really treat a disease, but we put attention to a need of a person where he has a whole range of needs and diseases and conditions. And this includes preventive treatment, education, and the fight against stigma. And in all this, the role of civil society organizations is very significant. And to the date, the um, strategic planning in countries already looks much more uh, at helping a person affected by TB than just providing a TB care in health facility. And this can be an entry point for advocacy and implementation of standardized package of services for supportive community-based services. And these aspects are being considered in the comprehensive package of supportive services developed by TBAC. Next slide, please. Uh, when developing the package, the concept of uh, ideal behavior, uh, I would say, in overcoming a TB, the patient uh, pathway from cough to cure was taken uh, as a basis. And while developing it, we thought that supportive services should be provided along the entire continuum of care of person with TB. Next slide, please. The whole package of services is presented here. It is divided into stages of treatment. Uh, uh, these are all non-medical supportive services. Each stage of the service has corresponding scheme of the patient's pathway, how and where uh, the patient moves with a particular diagnostic results. So the first one is the prevention for people who are not yet part of the system, but at risk of developing TB. This includes the awareness raising services, patient education, which um, uh, mean to train both like people with TB and those at risk uh, of TB. And the last service uh, is case management of latent TB, like informing counseling, working with a person on treatment. Uh, the next stage is detection and diagnosis. There is a very large and important component here, an active funding of people missed uh, by healthcare system, like detection of contacts, working with everyone who is, who is at the diagnostic stage and has not yet become a part of the medical system, as well as with those who already received the result of the diagnosis. The next block is treatment, uh, which, uh, um, which provides monitoring and treatment support services like a social support, work with side effects, informing the patient, helping with uh, treatment and informing loved ones about the risks and progress of treatment and work with people uh, uh, work with people with TB who interrupted treatment and are lost of follow-ups as well as work with uh, prevent interruption of treatment and this work uh, with the environment this work includes work with the environment of a person and motivational counseling si since the goal is to find the person who left treatment uh, find uh, find out the reason and to find out what needs to be done in order uh, for a person to start treatment again and complete it. And the last block is divided into two subgroups. The first five services are provided during the entire treatment. 
And the sixth uh, is provided after treatment at the rehabilitation stage. The service is uh, the service of assessing the needs of a person with TB is a mechanism for navigating through the needs that they have and based on where they live, work, uh, the necessary services for a person such as legal or uh, support uh, with children will be determined in the package. And each service has its own description on hourly uh, dimension, the frequency necessary, among other things, to calculate the cost of the service and also the criteria for the quality of the service. Please, next slide. Uh, we wanted to open up more opportunities for civil society organization to provide the above services and have identified a number of requirements for service providers and the uh, delivery processes itself. Uh, they related to the qualifications of the personnel, the requirements for managing uh, the organization and the availability of uh, experience, the availability of equipment if necessary, and the availability of premises if it is required by the service. All of the services can be provided by both medical and non-medical personnel, uh, social workers, psychologists, people who work with key groups and have the appropriate skills and qualification. Please, next slide. It is important to note that, uh, the, state, uh, that the package also includes monitoring indicators. Each service has its own indicators, frequency, uh, mm -hmm. to make sure it is provided with high quality and in the format in which it should be provided for a patient. Next slide, please. Each service uh, in the package can be calculated and have its own cost, like unit cost. Also, various uh, mechanism for fundraising for the provision of the services at the expenses both for national and local budget is described in the in the document, and each country based on its context will will be able to choose the best way of its implementation. Uh, the legislation analysis also was done, and the document provides recommendation based on the current situation in countries of the Caribbean. The document also reflects the individual cost uh, structures for specific countries because it was developed for the ECA region and provided a tool for services calculation to determine the cost of the entire package of services. And uh, I hope that this document uh, will will be will be ready and will be shared with uh, uh, with countries uh, um, in this de this December. So from my end, this is all. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Julia. That was very clear and helps us think properly about what bits of service can civil society provide. So can I turn now to Oksana Ruxinianu, who is the founder and director of SMIT, a major patient-led group in Moldova, um, which has had a big impact as, and also been a model for other countries to see how effective a patient-led group can be. So, Oksana, over to you. Thank you, Paul, for a nice introduction. And thank you, people, for joining us in the late uh, sessions of, uh, uh, of the union. Hope you will find the, the necessary and relevant information that, that you, every one of you could use in your local and country-specific uh, condition. Uh, before starting the um, presenting the findings and the results of the psychosocial support to people with tuberculosis, HIV, and viral hepatitis in the continuum of care, in the World Health Organization European region, I would like to just to give a short glimpse over the situation with, with this uh, three diseases in the WHO region, uh, because it's very important to understand that these uh, figures that I'm going to, to bring actually brought us to the idea uh, within uh, one of the meetings of the regional collaborative meeting of the WHO, actually to try to develop and to understand the, 
the situation of uh, psychological and social support in the region. So the progress achieved uh, in the fight to end HIV, TB and viral hepatitis in the WHO European uh, region uh, recently led to subsequent uh, reduction. Still, uh, these three diseases pose and continue to pose a public threat to, to, to countries in the region. Uh, if speaking about the situation, we know that the 18 uh, TB high priority countries uh, actually notif we've notified new and relapses form of TB account for about 83% of the global burden of uh, uh, tuberculosis uh, in, the, in the world. So despite the universal treatment coverage for drug susceptible TB and the multi-drug resistant TB, unfortunately, the, the targets of 85% uh, and 75% respectively are not met. And that's, that's an issue for, for, for countries to be, to be addressed. An estimated 15 million people live with HIV and unfortunately only 15%, uh, uh, a little bit more than 55% uh, have uh, accessed to the life safe safety medicine in uh, 2018. Uh, again, if speaking about the sharply increasing trends of HIV, HIV and uh, uh, co-infection with tuberculosis and viral hepatitis to understand that the, actually the situation is not going better. It uh, increases uh, from uh, 5% in 2011 to already 9% in 2015. Uh, we admit that people with associated TB co-infection co have actually seven uh, times higher risk of failing a treatment and even a three times high, higher risk to, uh, to die than a simple person who has TB. And that's, that's again something to be, to be really uh, concerned about. The HIV-associated TB co-infection co are more likely to cause uh, uh, deficiencies in people's immune response to hepatitis. So I would say that the review actually conducted uh, is a result of a um, gathering uh, of a common understanding and a common um, request of the members of the Regional Collaborative Committee to review and to, to assess the situation of psychosocial support in the WHO region. So the aim of this report was actually to review available practices of, on psychosocial support provided to people with tuberculosis, HIV, and viral hepatitis, to understand the role of uh, psychosocial support in the continuum of, of care, to enhance and sustain psychosocial support services within country and culture-specific settings. Uh, to do so, we actually reviewed, made a uh, revision and analysis of 80, uh, about 50 worldwide research articles. We have not limited only to the European region, but we started to do it more vastly on the global uh, trying to find and to uh, assess all the available information in a global perspective. Uh, we did as well a qualitative and quantitative data collection uh, based on a um, specific developed uh, questionnaire, which were, which were um, addressed to civil society organization in the region. And we received the responses from 24 non-governmental organization from 10 countries in uh, uh, situated in WHO uh, Europe region. Next slide, please. What were, in a few words, the main findings? Uh, because we'll have a later spe speaking more deeply, we will invite Safar to speak about the types, the premises, and the variety of psychological and social services. Actually, uh, we understand that psychosocial support is a part of a people-centered care, and uh, we should acknowledge that this is absolutely necessary. Uh, if we're speaking about people-centered care, we, we um, we understand that this is an approach uh, to care which is, goes much more beyond just a, a medical therapy. Uh, it sees the person as a whole with many different needs and goals uh, that come from the social determinants of health. 
And in this aspect, it pays particular attention to the overall well-being, choices, convenience, and safety of a person, and not just the immediate requirement of a medical treatment, as, as I said before. For this, uh, WHO uh, has a lot of uh, policies and strategies targeted to improve the country responses to those three diseases. So we have uh, global health sector strategies on HIV, WHO ANTB strategy, the global health sector strategy on viral hepatitis, action plans in every, on every disease, and uh, as well uh, um, a very good tool actually the TB blueprint for ECA countries which has been developed within the TB rep project, uh, uh, first TB rep project. Uh, speaking about the impact of uh, psychological and social support, we, we should not uh, come with a lot of uh, new things saying that uh, it is an important part of the continuum of care because it enables people to have a better response to treatment, to adhere, and to, if you are speaking per general, we, we acknowledge that that's a good way to improve the overall quality of life of people, which that results in a higher treatment success. And of course, in a lower failure and loss to follow-up follow up rates. Uh, why we need psychosocial support? I think it's absolutely crucial because uh, when, uh, when the person's um, um, life days and night are affected by different uh, different uh, uh, daily needs it's absolutely crucial to understand that we, you cannot solve a medical condition without taking in uh, into account and uh, paying uh, paying enough and relevant attention enough amount of time to solve all all those needs and uh, and problems which arouse a people uh, a people in treatment Speaking about the psychosocial support and services, what we understood that is actually we, we can divide psychosocial support in three kinds of services. We are speaking about psychosocial services, social services, and mixed services. Uh, another important finding within this report was actually the role of families. We, we acknowledge that families play a big role in uh, providing psychosocial support. And it is actually the family is one of the best contributors in meeting the needs of people affected by TB. Uh, however, we, we should acknowledge that the various effects of disease burden lies as well on the on families, not only not only on patient. And that's why every time we're speaking with uh, at any level possible, we're speaking uh, not about only about a TB patient, we're speaking about a family which is affected. And I think this is the correct way to, to approach the problem, speaking about a community affected starting from one person, a TB people, and, and going to a, to, to a broader concept about uh, the family perspective in, in TB, HIV, and viral hepatitis. Next slide, and in this, uh, in this way, I would invite uh, Safar, my colleague, because we work together with Safar, Dr. Masood, uh, and uh, Sayohat on this report, and I will give you the floor for the next slides for Safar. Uh, I should introduce Safar but briefly to say Safar Naimov uh, is an exceptional person and he too is effectively the one of the main founders of what is now a very extensive and successful uh, patient-led organization providing care across the country in Tajikistan. Safar. Thank you very much Paul for introduction. Thanks uh, all of the participants and those who are listening and watching us. And thank you, Oksana. Uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, I myself have uh, gone through the multi-drug resistant tuberculosis for four years in my life, very recently. So it was the times when, uh, despite the efforts of the doctors, despite of the uh, availability of medications, I felt like, uh, the world is uh, like uh, empty and uh, the, we are alone in the family and uh, there's no services. Uh, and uh, this is exactly uh, uh, what, the, what Oksana has uh, referred to the importance of family uh, support. 
And uh, apart from myself, uh, I had other loss in the family and it was huge struggle within the family circle. And uh, uh, definitely uh, this is uh, important uh, aspect, psychosocial support uh, for, uh, to achieve the uh, good treatment outcome. So when I came out of treatment as, uh, as now working with Stop TV Partnership Tajikistan, so uh, its owner, I mean, especially working in this document uh, with the WHO and the colleagues uh, on this aspect of the tuberculosis, uh, uh, which without which actually all the efforts would, uh, would look uh, meaningless. So uh, as uh, Oksana has already mentioned, so uh, uh, we have psychological services, social services and mixed services. So by psychological services, it's uh, psychological, emotional and spiritual support to address the social, emotional and economic determinants of the psychological health uh, and uh, support in solving socially significant problems uh, goes to social services and the mixed services of uh, uh, both the mentioned simultaneously. So many organizations who provided data, uh, uh, they uh, uh, provide uh, psycho psychological, social or mixed services and support uh, uh, this support without clear distinctions actually. So around a third of the organizations provides social support uh, and uh, then a third respondents provide legal support uh, as, as uh, data uh, indicated and support services provided by civil society organizations and community-based organizations include referral or accompaniment to other professional services like psychologists, therapists, dermatologists, lawyers, testing sites, laboratories. So uh, while psychological help is a service uh, that is provided by qualified uh, specialists, providing psychosocial support only via a certified qualified health and social workers uh, may not be feasible in uh, settings. And in this way, civil society organizations through their flexibility can adapt the psychosocial support to respond simultaneously to the psychological and social needs uh, of, the, uh, of the beneficiaries. And next slide, please. Uh, so we have settings, inpatient and uh, outpatient, uh, well, being hospitals and healthcare centers, a psychosocial, provide, uh, psychosocial support providers part of the overall care in, in these settings. And uh, they are generally well organized and structured uh, and has measurable impact indicators and mostly focused on side effects and status acceptance in the, in the initiation phase of the treatment. But uh, in the uh, uh, outpatient settings, we have uh, based on uh, psychosocial services, based on multidisciplinary approaches often available at community level and uh, addressing socioeconomic problems, stigma, interpersonal challenges and gender differences, inequalities. And these services provided mainly by non-governmental organizations or public services. So uh, the arrangements and structure of uh, uh, psychosocial support in outpatient settings where civil society organizations and community-based organizations are the main providers tend to be driven by, by the beneficiaries needs. And the next slide, please. Uh, well, we have uh, as seen in the literature and consultation review, various types of psychosocial support uh, uh, we have arranged in this table as it indicates and support services provided by organizations vary and include referral or uh, escorts to other relevant uh, professional services as mentioned. Uh, so we have health literacy, 
uh, awareness raising and advocacy, social support, financial support, emotional, uh, psychological, and uh, legal support. Uh, uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, here, many of the uh, consulted organizations who provide the data engaged uh, individuals, either qualified specialists or trained workers. Uh, several organizations note that uh, psycho, uh, psychosocial work is implemented on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. Others mentioned uh, a group or a team of specialists uh, providing psychosocial services uh, through uh, support groups, visits and meetings, delivering bags of food items, organizing charity concerts uh, to increase awareness and collect uh, funds, etc. So often the primary role in arranging and supervising the various activities under psychosocial support category, as well as referral across the services to match the specific needs of the person is fulfilled by the case managers working at the uh, NGOs or community led organizations. In general, a variety of providers approach and models of arranging psychosocial support services seems important in consideration of different contexts and levels of stigma and discrimination. And according to the reviewed literature and the data, uh, uh, a variety of formal and informal providers of psychosocial services are available uh, according uh, again to the needs of uh, people, uh, problem of the people. Uh, and uh, here, uh, over to you, uh, dear Oksana. To the next slide. Thank you, Safar. Beyond the fine, one of the, again, after thinking about the, the premises, the types and the variety of services, uh, psychosocial and uh, psychological services, as well as mixed services, when the, we understood that uh, there are as well a lot of risks and uh, in the same time uh, perspectives for, for the future. So I, I would like to point out the main findings regarding the risks. So we acknowledge that the significant part, and that's true, significant, significant part of psychosocial services in the region, we're speaking about uh, WHO region, uh, are implemented in partnership with uh, civil society, community-based organization, community leaders, local authorities, and some governmental organizations in some cases. Uh, there are examples of formalized cooperation between civil society, state institutions, and local authorities. We have a good examples in uh, Moldova and Tajikistan uh, regarding this. However, most of psychosocial support, both inpatient and outpatient settings, are unfortunately framed in single projects and financed mostly from external sources. Uh, at, this, at this point, uh, only a few examples of uh, psychosocial support services uh, have been found uh, uh, of being financed from the national uh, budget. And I would say that one of the, the fewest example is uh, the one of financing harm reduction uh, programs in, uh, in our country, in Moldova. Uh, social contracting or other financing mechanisms to ensure the provision of psychosocial support are lacking, but the, the, the good part is that there are countries where uh, this mechanism are under development and we have Georgia, Ukraine, Belarus, Moldova and Tajikistan and as Yulia Kalancha said in the beginning of the, of the session, uh, the, the tools which are now developed by, by TBA and FAST Center in, by, in a joint effort are um, helpfully seen as good uh, good tools to be to be uptaken by by the country uh, being adapted at the national and country specific uh, um, conditions unfortunately now consistent information on estimates when we are speaking about the costs of psychosocial support have been found uh, found in the region and uh, that's again an issue to be addressed and Coming again to the to, to the things uh, um, rose in the beginning, 
the tool we are, we are really looking for the tool to come in the middle of the December as a, as a good way to go out to go on and to continue asking and advocating for sustainable uh, engagement of civil society in uh, uh, national responses in TB, HIV and viral hepatitis. Next slide please. One of the challenges is, is uh, of course, related to the fact that the um, increasing uh, level of incomes of the country situated in the WHO uh, region actually leads to the fact that uh, many of the donors uh, are unfortunately shrinking or diminishing their, their support to the countries and uh, taking into the fact and uh, the idea that uh, psychosocial support actually is provided in the, in the country uh, um, through the means of civil society, of course, we, we can uh, expect that transitioning can affect uh, the provision of uh, psychological and civil and uh, social support in many ways. And uh, one of those ways could be reflected in uh, reducing the extent or even threatening the existence of provision of psychosocial support to, to people who are in need. Uh, uh, Oksana, I'm sorry to break in, but I wonder if you could bring your remarks to a close. We only have 10 minutes left. and. I already have about three questions listed here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll try to do it quickly. So we are disempowering. This uh, transition is disempowering the, the human capital and expertise built through years of internationally funded activities, and of course, it threatens any other donor support if uh, domestic efforts are not uh, are not enough. So the next slide, please. Uh, the next three slides are actually uh, coming with, with some actions for consideration for, for uh, as for civil society, as to high level decision making in the countries and based on three chapters, it's, it's related to policies, guidelines and for services to to affected people. So if we, if we are speaking about policies, we uh, we understand that provision of psychosocial support to people affected by the diseases should be an integral part of the national disease response. We need a secured budget for the services to ensure sustainability in the long term. Capacity building for provision a quality psychosocial support is again uh, absolutely important. And uh, the approach which should be taken into consideration while, while speaking about the prov provision of quality, providing a qualitative psychosocial support, it's, a, it's a absolutely a multidisciplinary approaches in doing that. Next slide, please. I'm, Oksana, I'm sorry, but I've now got, I think, four or five questions that we only have about six okay. minutes left. <laughs> so okay, I I I will I will just okay do it the, the last slide so I can show the just say Absolutely. the acknowledgement and show the address of the report so that people can access. Absolutely important is to understand that services should be should be adapted for people who are who are in need and that's for people to decide. Uh, it's absolutely definite that. There is no one uh, standard package. There should be different alternatives and options for people to, to access in order to, uh, to, to make the treatment uh, more and more easy for them to tolerate. And we are, acknowledge that guidelines is absolutely important for, to be followed because we need an, uh, an more or less uh, standardized approach in uh, training people who are providing psychosocial support. So that's it. I want to acknowledge the contribute the contribution contribution of a lot of people who worked on that report, for people who uh, who send us the, the data and on which we we were able to make this report. Um, so we, you can find the full report on the WHO page, and I think if you have enough time, just do it, and you'll find a lot of relevant information you can adapt and use for your country. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Oksana and Safa. Really, yeah, you've been giving a really good impetus to psychosocial work across the whole of our region. Um, we really do have only about five or six minutes left. 
And so I'm going to feed questions to you rather than ask the people to present them themselves. Um, the first one I have is from Sahed, who says, what was the methodology that TBEC used to develop social services for the eco reason? Has the policies been discussed within the country, experts and stakeholders? Um, I think maybe Yulia, you might have something to say on that to start with. Uh, yes, first of all, thank you for, for the question. Uh, um, it is very important to say that uh, this document was not developed as a mandatory document, yes, but uh, it was developed as, as a model, uh, as a frame for possible use and adaptation at the uh, adaptation and implementation at the country levels. So there was used a literature review, uh, uh, we describe uh, and gather best practices for countries and also a WHO recommendation. And uh, this document is developing, as I already mentioned, together with WHO, it is consulting uh, with Global Fund and other partners. And what regarding the methodology, we just take the uh, whole pass uh, from the cough to cure, as I also already mentioned, and we went through all the continuum of care for a person with TB and uh, the uh, services was divided on different parts through this continuum of care from pass uh, from cough to cure. So in this regard, I think this is uh, what I can comment on this uh, question. And regarding the uh, policy, I think if I if I got the, the question right, as I already said, it's not mandatory, but it, it is consultating through the uh, through the national dialogue that Tibet is conducting in the country. So within the national dialogues, we're trying to uh, uh, to reflect and to see how how the uh, stakeholders are um, uh, can implement this document and if within <laughs> if it is within their you know. Um, uh, interest, I would say, because if it's not interesting for a country, they cannot use it like it's up to them. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I won't ask Oksana and Safar to comment on that particular question, though they may it may influence their neck, the next question, which is aimed specifically at Oksana and Safar, that Ferdiana Yonita say, asks, how do you perform psychosocial support during the COVID pandemic? Uh, just briefly, the most safest and effective and relevant at this particular time is the digital tools. And in our case, this is one impact that is developed uh, two, three years ago with, with collaboration of civil society, communities, and Stop TV partnership and dual technologies. This is like now is uh, uh, spreading in the region and uh, in my country also we had this uh, tool uh, piloted, but right now we have uh, been able to put it uh, as a three main strategic document in the country, like uh, uh, the partners themselves, like uh, they have seen this uh, as important. So this tool provides actually, it connects people and uh, allows people uh, to speak and the response team to respond and uh, feed advocacy, so both ways, so yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll also then move speedily to the next question um, from, from Mukadas Yakubova, um, who incidentally Safar specifically says greetings because uh, she worked with you at some time in Tajikistan. Her question is, if there were signed some agreements or memoranda for joint work with CSOs or national partners, if there, whether there were certain strategies developed on psychosocial support, it would be interesting to hear if there were guidelines or supporting documents for implementation. So basically, I think uh, if we start with you, uh, uh, Safar and Oksana, but then also Yulia, you may want to add, um, the significance of formal agreements and strategies with government. Over to you, Oksana, or Safa. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for the question. And thank you for, for people being so interested in psychosocial support provision. Absolutely, I think that's, uh, that's important to have a formal agreement with uh, uh, 
national TB program, for example, we managed to to do a formal agreement within the TB Rep one in 2016. Still, it takes time sometimes to to make this or to op, I would say oper, operationalize to make this uh, formal agreement work because it's it's one to have a paper signed and it's the other one to have a, uh, to be to be uh, budgeted from national uh, uh, national um, national funds. Uh, in this uh, in, in this respect, I would say. It, it takes almost four years because it's only this year that the uh, national insurance uh, company actually admitted and recognized the role of civil society. Because we are, if speaking directly about the, the engagement of uh, civil society and national TB program, I would say that it's absolutely crucial and it, it's good, but finance comes from another place. So, and if we, we are in this process, we are not. Uh, uh, sure about uh, engaging all the stakeholders and the one who make decision and the others who give the money. It's uh, and it takes it takes times in uh, in uh, in uh, the um, case of Moldova. It takes about four years, but only this year the the national insurance uh, company gives some money to is uh, I would say is committed to give money already, not just words and. Uh, and uh, recognition and uh, um, saying that we are absolutely crucial, but actual, uh, absolutely giving some funds for for us to to be uh, to be able to continue the activities. Unfortunately, if speaking about the psychosocial support, uh, at now the the um, civil society is more or less seen as a uh, serv service provider in detection as it's absolutely crucial now especially during uh, during the pandemic to to try to help the primary health care in detecting because the notification case the notification rates for example in tb dropped with 40 percent and uh, right now this is the role of civil society as for the psychosocial support, we are providing uh, it more or less, uh, taking into the consideration the guidelines at the national level. But still, if we are speaking generally, uh, the, the guidelines should still be uh, improved and it should take the, the perspective, not only about TB, but the, the fact that actually that our groups and people which are working with uh, the vulnerable population are usually affected not only by one disease. And this is another a thing which shows that the integration of the uh, national programs, for example, in our countries, should be, should be one of the next steps to do, uh, to do and to construct a, an absolutely good uh, response to the diseases. Thank you. Thank you. Now, by my reckoning, we should have already closed, but I'm not seeing any messages from the union organizers telling us to shut up. Um, so I shall keep going for a few moments. Um, Yulia, do you want to add anything to Oksana's comments there? Uh, not really, because Oksana, uh, Oksana had a con co comprehensive answer. And as I wanted to add as well, as we, uh, as the package developed by TBAC is really comprehensive and it also includes the uh, psychosocial support services with the full description of it. So I think it, it can be also helpful for a country to, uh, to take it and to implement. Mm -hmm. And also I, receive, I, I can see the question from uh, uh, Ferdiana uh, Unita. So I wrote my email, uh, uh, please email me if you would like to receive this package or uh, when it's, when it's gonna be ready because now it's a, 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 we are consulting uh, with WHO and they are reviewing this package. And when we will receive the feedback from them, we will finalize it and then it will be placed on the Tibet website and everyone, every country can take it and implement uh, on the national level, taking into account their uh, context, specific context. Because not all of the services described in the package uh, should be implemented because maybe civil society do not have a capacity to implement it. So it it also the, the point for a discussion because the, the package is comprehensive, but you need to look what services are needed for your uh, country. And uh, if your 
civil society or to be community have enough capacity to implement those services. So this is the other thing. Yeah. I might add that there is another document that will be helpful complementing the work that Oksana and Safar have done, which is um, a background organization for myself, uh, TV Alert in Britain, is preparing more of a workbook where, uh, where Oksana and Safar have well described the needs and, and the principles. Um, the TV Alert document is intending to be more of a workbook that people can use to actually do the things that need to be done. I should also mention there was early on a comment, but not a question from Rajesh Gopal. So I would thank him for having made the comment. And his comment was basically that um, patient-centered care, people-centered care is absolutely critical and is the way to go in TB work. So thank you for that comment. I think then, I, it, it, unless anybody is desperate to say anything more, um, I should bring this session to a close to thank you, first of all, of course, to the, to the, the, the speakers, to the panelists, um, to Yulia Kalancha, uh, Oksana Ruxiniano, and Safar Ali Naimov. But also a big thank you to all the participants. We're now late on a Saturday afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. Uh, and we nonetheless attracted around 50 people to join us on this conversation. Um, and I think that underlines the interest and importance that there is to ensuring proper uh, psychosocial and social care uh, through so the work that we're doing on standardized packages and on the promotion of psychosocial care, um, that these are two major developments in TB work worldwide. And so on that note, I would say thank you to you all. Have a good weekend, a nice rest after the conference, and thank you to the conference organizers. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>